Hello everybody and welcome to uh, Hills Road Sixth Form College and uh, welcome to uh, the introduction to film studies. So um, just to begin with some introductions, um, I, my name's Tanya, I've got Anna, one of my colleagues in here with us. Um, Isabella is a film studies student um, and Archie <clears throat> I think is here without visuals but with sound film studies student. So what we're going to be doing is taking you through um, various aspects of the course, you know, what it contains, what kind of skills you need to do it, what kind of skills you will be, uh, you'll gain from doing it. Um, and just to give you a kind of sense of what the course is, what's expected and where that can potentially lead. After that point, then we're going to have uh, the question and answers. So that's when I'm going to hand over to Anna and Isabella and Archie um, to, uh, to go through your questions. So if there are any questions as we go through the, the first part of this, the presentation, please do just pop them into the Q&A and, um, and we can, you know, we can have a look at those as we go through. So first thing to say is you're actually looking at people who absolutely love film. You know, we love film <laughs> um, and that's why we teach it and that's why we, we really enjoy teaching it at Hills Road. And, you know, from my point of view and Anna's point of view, you know, we get to meet students like Isabella and Archie, you know, in our classes. And that's an absolute joy because, you know, they are incredible uh, film study students. So just to um, just to begin with, um, you know, what kinds of things will you be um, uh, armed with? You know, what kinds of things will you be doing? When you are studying, EMF is English Media and Film, and that's our faculty. Um, and, you know, similar thing if you were in the Media Studies talk, you know, similar skills here. The courses are not the same, as you will see, but there are similarities within skills. So, you know, we want to um, help you find your voice. We want you to become students who can articulate and interrogate and challenge, you know, any film they encounter. You know, that's what we want from students at the end of the course. Um, you know, we will teach you how to speak film, you know, using film grammar. Um, you know, we will give you the confidence to be able to tackle, you know, films that ordinarily or initially might be outside of your comfort zone. We will look at challenging concepts. Now, there's different ways to read that phrase, isn't it? We will challenge concepts. So we'll look at a whole range of different films. Um, some of which you might have pre-existing expectations of or assumptions about, you know, which you then might challenge as we go through. We will also look at challenging concepts. So we will look at critical frameworks um, such as, you know, ideas around narrative and genre and auteur, which is obviously looking at directors with particular sig signature styles. So all manner of things come up in the course. And it is about challenge, you know, we will empower you to challenge. We engage with debates. So, you know, these are classrooms which are not quiet. You know, they are full of people who want to express their opinions about films, who want to engage with different ideas, who want to challenge their own ideas, and, you know, who want to articulate their particular view of the films that they're studying. So there'll be lots of debates for you to engage in. You know, it's a course, you know, that asks you to think independently. Um, you know, there are obviously points where you will be doing creative work independently, but it's always more than that. This is about, um, you know, you obviously being in a classroom, you know, listening to what the teacher saying, what your peer group's saying, but then thinking, well, what do I think? You know, what's my response to either this film that I have known for years or this film that I've never encountered before? We talked about questioning assumptions Now, the assumptions might be your assumptions about a particular film and because you've seen it before, or these might be assumptions that are in the text, i.e. in the film. So a film might assume a particular um, position on a particular event or an issue. You don't have to agree with that, do you? We're not, we're not passive consumers. We are, you know, dynamic and articulate and challenging consumers who will make up our own minds about what we take from, from a film. Now, books change the world. Readers change the world. Um, you know, films change the world. We all know that. Um, you know, they can change the world in a dramatic, um, powerful, 
you know, incredibly sort of challenging way, or, you know, they might uh, change the world in sort of small incremental ways. So, you know, you're going to be looking at some texts which are mainstream, but you'll be looking at some which are quite the contrary, you know, quite different. Right, so what I would like to do now is just to um, have a look at the course. Right, so it really is a wonderful course. I mean, this is this is a course that takes you through um, it takes you through film history. It takes you on a on an extraordinary journey from the the advent of cinema, from the beginnings of cinema, you know, through different countries, through different genres, through different styles. Um, and, you know, brings you right into the contemporary world. We have a three week induction at the beginning of the course. Now that induction covers in a, in a snippet, all of the texts on the course. So you can see what, which films you're going to be looking at. It also gives you all of the skills, all of the basic skills to be able to access the course, you know, the, the, the actual course when we start. If you've done GCSE film or media, great. If you haven't, great. It doesn't matter. Those three weeks are all about getting everybody up to speed, everybody um, feeling confident that they can engage with the course and, you know, bring their own voice. So if your question is about, do I need pre-existing qualifications in this type of area? No, you don't. You don't. We follow the OCR exam board. Um, and the course is broken down into three components, as you can see here. Um, this, the third component is on the next slide. You have got two exam components, and then you have a, an NEA, a non-examined assessment, which is your creative work. So you can see here, can't you, from just some of these names, there'll be names that you recognize. There'll be names where, that you have not ever encountered before. And that's the beauty of the course, because you'll, you'll look at texts that you think you know and maybe look at them a different way. You'll look at texts that you've never seen before and articulate your response to them um, in a way that might even surprise you in terms of how you, how you react. So we start off with um, film history, wonderful place to start. And you look at texts as diverse as Sunrise, which is a, a German expressionist influenced, not completely German expressionist, but expressionist influenced silent film from the 1920s, beautiful piece of filmmaking. We then go into looking at Vertigo, obviously a classic of um, you know, Hitchcock's thriller um, over. Uh, Do the right thing, you know, completely different racial conflict, um, heat, tempestuous, marvelous piece of filmmaking from the 1980s. So you can see why these things are chosen, can't you? It gives you a sense of US film through different decades. Uh, they're diverse, you know, they're, they're wonderful, they're different, they uh, bring about all sorts of debate. Section B, we go into European cinema. You can't study film studies without having a look at some of these major movements and styles within film history. So you look at uh, surrealism, for example. So Jean Andalou and Large Door, classics of surrealist cinema. Um, I won't go into too much detail about some of the things that are in these films, but they are they are wonderful and surreal. It's like looking at you know you, uh, somebody's subconscious kind of splattered all over the um, the visual and aural palette of the film. Um, you know, wonderful pieces of filmmaking, shocking, challenging, uh, extraordinary and different. Then we have a look at some French New Wave. And the French New Wave film is Breathless, a Buddha souffle um, from Jean-Luc Godard. So if you know anything about French New Wave, you're looking at this, this wonderful piece of film about, you know, ostensibly young people on a journey. But you're also looking at incredible revisions in film grammar. You're looking at cinematography used as editing and vice versa. You know, technically, um, very, a very advanced piece of filmmaking. So there you go. That's component one. It gives you a lovely sense of, you know, some of the, the differences and the developments within film, you know, over a number of years up until the 1980s. Component two takes us into critical approaches. 
So this is where we start engaging with, you know, critical frameworks, looking at different debates. Um, it starts with possibly the most recognizable films for you, which are Skyfall and uh, The Force Awakens. But you're not just looking at them in terms of their cinematography and editing and mise-en-scene and sound. You're looking at them in terms of do they have auteur credentials? Can you tell these directors you know, from what you're looking at? How does the spectator, how do we, the people that consume these films, engage with um, you know, films that initially you might think are fairly standard pieces of uh, genre construction, but actually there might be more in them. They might be trying to do something different. They might be trying to engage you, for example, uh, like The Force Awakens, with a different construction of uh, genre representation. You know, Skyfall, is this any different from a, a, a Bond fran franchise piece? Is it doing anything different? Um, sex, so obviously the debates are in there. Section B, we're looking at documentary. You've got one documentary there. So really it's a forensic study of you know, different styles of documentary. You know, what are the different styles? Um, how can they be used? What impact do they have on the, on the viewer? Um, are they manipulative? You know, what strategies are the texts using in order to um, make us want to see them, keep us viewing, because we can easily turn off, can't we? Um, and they may well be positioning us in order to have a particular response. We might not want to respond like that. So documentary and, you know, the ways in which it's constructed and attempts to um, create meaning for its audience. Section C in the exam is about ideology. So we have chosen the theme of conflict. You are looking at, you will look at three films, you know, very different, but all about conflict. Um, you know, so you're having, uh, you'll be having debates in your classroom, you know, with your peers, with your teacher about, you know, whether the Hurt Locker uses the, the same kind of, you know, soundscape, for example, to engage us that District 9 does. Um, to what extent? Are genre conventions being used in order to create particular types of conflict in these films? So that's an overview of texts. Um, it's a wonderful array, really uh, an exciting array of variety, but also it's, it's a good choice of films to get you really thinking about um, how to engage with film. The third component is your non-examined assessment, which is your short film. Obviously, at the moment, we're in a particular context, so that's had to be amended slightly. Um, the students are still doing creative work. You, you might want to put a question to Isabella about what they're doing. Um, ordinarily, they might make a short film, but you know, making sure that students are safe in this context is absolutely the most paramount thing in our minds. So you know, we've been making digital storyboards. You know, we've been make, putting together screenplays, the most wonderful screenplays from the group, um, full of kind of creative uh, uh, originality. So really, this is the point in the course where you you can bring your your wonderful ideas, you know, the thing, the story that you've always wanted to tell. Um, finally, you can tell it, you know, within a particular uh, screenplay context. So thirty percent, if 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 you if you like sort of percentages. 30% for component three, 35% each for components one and two. So hopefully that gives you an overview of the course. Right, you may well be thinking about um, media studies or film studies. You may well have been in the last session where I was talking about media studies. Um, they are different courses. They are compatible. Um, Isabella does both. So, you know, it, she is a, a, the perfect person to ask about what the differences are. For a, a summary, um, you know, obviously the media studies course covers a wide range of media forms. In the media studies course, you're, you're doing everything from sort of radio through music video to um, video games to magazines. In the film studies course, as you've seen, it's very, very much about the film text, you know, film movements, um, you know, film styles, film history. There's a little bit of film in the media studies course, but it's not textual analysis. It is looking at the ways in which two particular films are, are marketed. It's film marketing, and that's here. So they are compatible. 
Um, the crossovers are things like some of the, the language that you may well use. You know, if you're talking about different kinds of cinematography, it's, it's as relevant, isn't it, to a film as it is to television program. So some of the language, some of the, the, the fluency of the subjects is similar, but the texts are different. Um, you know, and they, they provide a really good combination together. Right, so what kind of skills can you gain? So, you know, um, this is the point where you have to project yourself into your future. You know, you're sat around a dinner party table, aren't you, with your brandy, just rolling it around. Um, you know, what can you show off? What kind of skills will you, as this wonderful film studies student, have? So, and Isabella and Archie have all of these things. You know, they, they can talk about different film movements. They can articulate, you know, what's the difference between the French New Wave and um, surrealism. They can, you know, offer up a, a really interesting interrogation of a mainstream product such as Skyfall, okay? Um, you know, there's a fluency about a film study student at the end of the course. So film grammar fluency basically means you will be able to tell me or Anna or, who, or your peers specifically what kind of cinematography is being used, specifically what kind of lighting. You, you won't say the lighting in the film, you'll say, yes, but the, you know, look at the chiaroscuro, um, you know, or you won't just talk about cinematography, you'll say, yes, but that canted angle at that point was used for this. So your ability to, um, you know, to talk, talk film will be, will be quite extraordinary. High level of textual analysis, of course, because that's, that's, it, that's what we do. You will be looking at cinematography, editing, sound, mise en scène, which is you know what you can see through the film, um, and how they generate meaning. You'll also be looking at uh, applying critical frameworks, as we talked a little bit before. Now they're not case studies; you're not just learning them to reiterate. Um, you are looking at, for example, auteur theory. You know, is it possible to identify particular specific characteristics, signatures attached to a director, um, and looking at whether those are evident within the films. I mean, obviously, when you can't look at Vertigo without thinking, where are Hitchcock's signatures? You know, are they here? How are they being used? Are they different from previous films? And, you know, being creative is wonderful. You know, you, you get to be creative, as I said. Um, you know, you get to make, do a screenplay, you get to make a film. Um, you know, if that's, that's the thing that you want to do eventually, yes, you get to do it. Right, so in terms of assessment, um, I think it's important that you, you know, you know how these things are assessed. Um, there's six key assessment points in the year. So at six key points, you will have a piece of work that's formally marked that we can then use to help you understand your progress. You know, any key assessment point is not just for the teacher. This is for us to sit you down and say, well, this is how you did uh, on this assessment. Um, this is the scaffolding we're going to give you, i.e., you know, these are the extra pieces of framework. These are the, um, the model, there you go, modeling, model essays that we might be giving you. Try and use them in order to improve your work. Now, obviously, you don't get scaffolding and modeling after you've done something solely. You know, we will put into place those things for you as you go along. It's all about making you a confident person in the subject. So you'll get plenty of support throughout the course, whether that's how to write an introduction, you know, how to structure an argument, how to use film grammar. You know, we'll make sure you have all of that. Peer and self-assessment is really important. So obviously your teacher will um, assess your work, but you know, the more assessment and the more feedback you get, the better. So you'll be sitting in a classroom with people who are as articulate as you are about film studies. You'll, you'll want to know um, what they think of the paragraph you've just written. Um, and then you'll want to know what you think about it. Plenty of feedback, that could be one-to-one, -one, that could be from your peers, that could be online. Um, it's always constructive. You know, we always give you a sense of, you know, these things are really good. These things need to be uh, amended um, or improved for next time. Um, and, you know, the, the, it is a, the ethos is in the English media and film department is very much about you know, we need to reflect on our work, we need to evaluate what we've done, we need to think carefully about what was really good about the work and what needed improvement, and then we can reapply. So we can have a look at the next task, have a look at the feedback, and make things better and better and better.
you know, the more you talk and the more you write, the better it gets. So, as I was saying, this is a really nice little slide about the kinds of subject support that you will get. Um, obviously, in your class, we're all subject experts. Anna, myself, and Caroline, our colleague, are all film experts. We'll be able to help you with that, film A-level experts. Um, yes, transition and scaffolding, we talked about that. Peer group support. Even at the moment, you know, it's important, isn't it, to be able to talk to your peers. So if you have an online class and you are able to go to a breakout group, you know, you, you are digitally collaborating, um, but it's an important process. You know, great things come out of collaboration. There's plenty of support for you. So it's not just in the classroom. It's also with things like university applications. Right. So extension and enrichment. Um, you know, this is this is very important to us that you you don't feel as if your classroom is some hermetically sealed, you know, place where nothing happens outside of it um, and you know do feel free to ask um, Isabella and Archie what kind of things they've done you know but we've worked hard to kind of even in the, the COVID context to get people in to do um, Zoom talks or get people into Zooms to do talks to the students um, before lockdown we you know we had something from the BFI came in students have been to uh, various kind of film festivals um, days organised for them to meet people from BB, the BBC. Uh, again, sort of Zooms in lockdown with, um, with directors, which is, is phenomenal to be able to talk to a real director about their work. I'm not talking Spielberg right here, by the way, you know, but, but well-known directors. Um, trips to specific subject events. Uh, yes, well, we, we have been to um, a water sprite event, which was all about, you know, careers in the, in the sort of creative industries. Um, joint ventures with the university and other HE providers. I think it's important, isn't it, for students to, to be able to engage with the sort of the next educational kind of level, their peers or themselves in three years' time, really, or two years' time. So we have some joint ventures going on with the university um, in terms of students from university and from Anglia Ruskin, that they've created this wonderful... Um, group of Cambridge creatives and have invited Hills Road students along to um, submit articles and reviews for their websites. That's a wonderful example. Myself and my colleagues, you know, Anna and I will, um, will give you reading and viewing lists. You know, they may be viewing lists about, you know, kind of wonderful texts from around the world which you haven't encountered before or new, uh, new things to watch. It might be as simple as putting a message on Teams saying, look, later on, why don't you watch this particular film? You haven't seen it before. It's really good. Right. So there's opportunities to write for specific publications to become competition judges. So there's some students at the moment who are you know, judging um, for an international um, student film competition. Wonderful. Wonderful. And also writing for magazines. And we try our hardest to, um, to try and connect with people and think about opportunities for work experience and work shadowing. You know, we want you to be happy in the classroom. We want you to be uh, feeling that it's a vibrant environment, but also that needs to that needs to go out of the classroom into your enrichment, and it needs to go further on in your journey in terms of your possible progression. It's all routes that we, we try and help you with. Right, so we're very pleased with the results. Uh, a star to B, um, 80%, um, about average for the last few years, which, which is phenomenal. Look at the national 44% um, and A to E 100%. So we're really proud of those grades. Really proud of our students. And there you go. So that's quite a few different types of courses that film study students have um, engaged with in higher education. All sorts of things, practical, analytical, um, you know, even biomedical science, you know. This is, these subjects are not just a route into the media and film industries. Right, so what I'm gonna do now um, is I have obviously given you lots of information. Um, I'm going to hand over to Anna, who's going to, to read through some of the questions for you. So um, thank you very much for now. Um, so the first question that we've got is from Ellie Rose Hinsley. Um, most popular question, which is, would you say film A-level limits future uni career options? Would media A-level be more suitable if you don't know if you... 
you if you don't know exclusively that you want to focus in on on media studies so i guess what i would say um to to that is um obviously um i think what's probably most important is that you pick the course that you think you are going to be most interested in studying so you know if you have a kind of a broad interest in in media studies um, so you have an interest not just in film, but got an interest in, in music videos, um, in marketing and advertising, um, in, in TV, in newspapers, in radio. Um, and you'd quite like to take a look at the different texts that we offer on the Media Studies course, then perhaps that's the course for you. Um, however, if you think you're going to be more engaged by the films that we study, um, then I would pick the, the Film Studies course. I think that's always my starting point. Um, I think pick the course that you think you're going to enjoy most because that's what's going to keep you motivated. That's what's going to keep you committed to the course, engaged and interested. I don't think, um, however, having said that, that film studies is an A-level that is more limiting, um, either in terms of um, university choices or in terms of, of uh, future, future jobs. So I think film studies is one of those courses, it's a bit like English, I think that it can open doors rather than kind of close doors down. Um, I think it gives you a huge range of skills. So as Tanya started off by saying, um, you know, it gives you the capacity to develop your personal voice, it gives you the capacity to articulate to think for yourself, to articulate in a very confident way what it is you are thinking um, and gives you um, opportunities to kind of challenge and question. I think that skill set um, is something that's kind of important, you know, in life, whatever it is you go on to do. Um, so I would absolutely say I don't think film closes anything down. I think really it can only open things up for you. I guess that kind of leads into Jessica Seal's question um, around what jobs can film studies facilitate. So, I mean, yes, students of ours do go on um, to, to study film courses at university. So um, those might be kind of film theory courses, they might be film production courses, they might be film journalism courses. Um, but those aren't the only courses that students go on and do. Students go on and do a huge range of courses. And certainly kind of one of the, the courses that students have gone on to study in the past, um, you know, gone on to do biomedical sciences. Uh, so, you know, I think, again, it's one of those subjects that can take you in multiple directions. This question from Alexander Taylor. Um, will I be at a disadvantage if I haven't taken media studies or film at GCSE? I think I covered that earlier, didn't I? I think so, yes. I mean, I was going to say, Isabella, I don't know if you want to say anything about that. Did you do film studies or um, media No, studies? I didn't do either and I don't think it's put me at a disadvantage. Even like maybe in the first week or so, there was a moment where other people knew more terminology than me or something like that but in the whole scheme of things it really doesn't and I don't think you need to do either because at my school I couldn't there wasn't an option for me to take either of them but I don't think they have put me at a disadvantage. And I think one of the things that we do appreciate when students start with us is you know that lots of the students who join us haven't done media studies or film studies at GCSE and that's part of the reason why we start with an induction course for three weeks so we can introduce all students to, to film language um, and to the film course uh, so that you know, within a relatively short space of time, even if you have done media studies or film studies at GCSE, really kind of everybody has caught up with you within kind of three, four weeks. Um, so, so no, um, Alexandra, I don't think that you would be at a disadvantage if you haven't taken media studies or film studies at all. Next question um, is from Louise Palmer Master. If I took drama for GCSE, will it help me to understand some things in this course? So again, Isabella, I don't know if you and Archie, did you do drama at GCSE? Um, yeah, I did do drama, but I would say that Film studies for me has more similarities to English than drama because drama was quite practical and English basically had the same skills um, as film studies, but you're just writing about films rather than 
novels, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes absolute sense to me, definitely. Um, I mean, I think the possibly the, if you've done drama for GCSE, I think one of the ways in which um, your knowledge and understanding of drama can feed into your ability to, to analyse film studies. Um, one of the concepts, the, the areas that we, the micro elements that we do look at when analysing film is the, is the idea of performance. Um, so as a, a theatre studies practitioner, you will have a really good understanding of, of how actors perform. Um, and so that's one element that you could certainly look for when um, when analysing when analysing film. Um, so in that sense, um, I think it would help you understand things in the course. Uh, but absolutely, just picking up on what Isabella was saying, I do think it is a course that's um, in many ways is quite similar to, to English. Um, so you you're you're reading a text. Um, you you have the opportunity to to analyse that, to debate it, to discuss it. Um, and and then formulate an argument about your own ideas around a text. Um, but you're not doing it with books. You're doing it with films. So you know, really, um, I think the kind of the, the medium that's probably most important for the 21st century um, is going to be the um, the kind of text that you are going to be using. Um, so, just Isabella, you did both courses. Um, Quite often we get asked the question, what's the difference? I mean, I've I've tried to sort of give um, an outline of it, but but what's your what's your take on the differences between the courses? Um, yeah, I know what you mean because when I chose both courses, I thought they were going to be quite similar, and they do share um, a lot of the same like terminology some of the time. But I think they're very different in terms of the text that you study and the way you study them because. Film studies is obviously just about film um, and it's normally more about micro analysis and um, things like that. But media studies, you do more about representation, maybe more theory and things like that. And across a much wider range of texts, so like video games, magazines, music videos, TV shows, things like that. What's been your favourite part of the film course, Isabella? Um, the French New Wave film. Okay. Yeah. Why is that? Um, well, I, I like all the things that we study for different reasons, but before I did film studies, I watched quite like a minimal range of films, if that makes sense. And then when I got exposed to the French New Wave, I just, I really liked it, like all the techniques that they use. That links quite well to a question um, that came up earlier about the, um, the European cinema seems to be just French. Um, well, we have obviously have to go by the text that are um, given to us by the exam board. Um, however, there are opportunities on the course for you to range outside of that and do research into um, other texts of, of you know, similar nature or different um, film movements in order to give yourself a kind of real rich sense of, um, you know, which texts are there. So, you know, if you're looking at it thinking, well, I want to do more than that, well, then, then we would we would say, Yes, we'll do, do more than that, you know, uh, extend yourself outside of the classroom. Yeah. I suppose the other thing as well to say is, you know, obviously as part of the course, absolutely, we, we kind of have to follow the specification and one element of that is, is European film. Um, but as part of the ideology question, um, we have to look at foreign language film and we do look at a Chinese film there by um, a, a Hong Kong New Wave director called Wong Kar Wai. Um, so there are you know, other films from other nations represented in the course, absolutely, as absolutely. well. Yeah. Um, there's also, just um, Isabella, going back to kind of your experience of the course, there's a question here from Tabitha Welch um, about what have you found easy or what have you found hard about the course? Um, kind of, can you say I anything think about that? Maybe... Not easy, but because I did, obviously everyone does English for GCSE, then quite a lot of the skills that I gained from doing that for GCSE was directly transferable to film studies. Um, and maybe something that's hard would be at the beginning learn learning all the techno terminology. But I think because we repeat it quite a lot of the time and it was really, you know, it wasn't hard to learn it after a month or so. 
but it was just uh, yeah like in the first week or two it was a bit hard so it kind of becomes second nature to you doesn't yeah. it yeah um so there was a question um about class sizes uh so as with all classes across the college we've got a maximum size of 24 um and certainly that's the size of Isabella's class um, in the upper six. Um, in the lower six this year, we have got two classes um, and the size of those classes is slightly smaller. We've got about 16, 17 students in those classes. Um, so Max Slade has asked the question, in the course, are any horror films studied? Um, so at, at the moment, um, there aren't any explicit horror films on the course no um however i guess there are kind of two things that i would say to qualify that statement um at the moment um i'm teaching we're teaching sunrise which is a german expressionist film um and uh, we're studying a director fw murnau um and certainly one of the films that he is most renowned for is nosferatu um, which is, um, I guess, kind of very early horror film and, um, you know, really is uh, the Dracula, um, as we now know Dracula to be, um, is, is really kind of based on the now's presentation um, in, in Nosferatu. So, you know, I guess we kind of do elements of the course that perhaps highlight to you where particular genres began. Um, and so, you know, in that sense, there is an element where we're kind of, you know, we have engaged with the idea of horror. Um, but as Tony said, there are opportunities for you to explore um, genres that you are interested in. So just because we're not necessarily studying a set text that's a horror film, that doesn't mean you don't get the opportunity to explore horror. There's a question here from Lucy Gentry um, as well about what films have you previously looked at? Um, Tony, do you want to say anything about kind of films we've looked at before? Before as in? Uh, I guess kind of you know, not associated with this specification, kind of when we've taught film before. Oh, okay. Um... I mean, we've got a Vertigo is, all, is you know, a Hitchcock film's often been on there. You know, yeah. previously I've studied Brief Encounter. Yes. Um, I've also studied City of God was a film that I, I did for a number of years. Mm. Um, so again, you know, kind of um, another sort of foreign language film. So, you know, big range of films that we have engaged with previously. Yeah. Um, from Tabitha Welch, do you need previous experience, knowledge with cameras, will you be at a disadvantage without? So again, kind of um, same answer really as to the question um, around, do I need to know if I've not done media studies or film studies before, will this put me at a disadvantage? The answer to the question is absolutely not. Um, you know, we will give you a, um, kind of training on how to use the cameras, training on how to use um, our editing software, um, and opportunities to, to do that in advance of any coursework um, that you might do using those. I think you've already mentioned this already. So Sophia Corderose asked, what exam board do you use? Um, and we are currently for film studies. We're with the OCR specification. I want to pass over to Isabella to, to finish this off for us. Yeah, Isabella, why, why study film at A-level? Um, well, there's quite a lot of reasons why, but... Um, I think the main one for me is that it's just really enjoyable and because A-levels can be really stressful, it is, I think it's really important to do a subject that you really like and not just that, but it can provide you with so many skills that aren't just limited to film, but it can go into so many other like subjects and careers that you might want to do later on in your life. Um, and it's just really opened my mind up about so many things, not just about film, but about society and politics and because we study those things like in relation to cinema as well so I think it's a really important subject. And what are your plans Isabella? You're planning to go off and do film? Yeah I'm going to do film studies somewhere in New York. Yeah. In New York? Exciting. Yeah. Exciting. Okay well look I mean you know uh, it's been absolutely lovely speaking to you all. We can't see you you know but you've asked some tremendous questions and they've been um, you know, it really helped us to sort of, you know, uh, formulate what we wanted to say to you. Um, you know, have a look at this presentation again. Um, if you have any other questions, do send them in. 
Um, but you know, it's been it's been lovely to talk to you. Um, you know, we all love our subject. Um, we 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 want you to do it because we love it. You know, have a think, make an informed decision, and hopefully we will see some of you in our classrooms in the not too distant future. So uh, uh, just for now, um, we're all going to say goodbye. <laughs>